Hey guys, this is the portable hand truck battery cart I built just a few days ago featuring an MPP solar inverter and two 100 amp hour 24 volt batteries. Now shortly after I published this video, I started receiving an immense amount of feedback and suggestions on how to make this safer. First and foremost, this outlet box definitely should have had a GFCI outlet or some sort of protection device installed. And I see now that does pose somewhat of a safety risk. So today we're going to rewire this outlet box to include GFCI protection. Additionally, a few people expressed concern that there was no overcurrent protection on this device. This inverter can supply a maximum of 20 amps, and it does have a short burst capacity, but it does internally limit electronically the amount of current it could put out. Nevertheless, I do believe it is important to also include an overprotection device in here, such as a circuit breaker. So we're going to add a circuit breaker to this as well. So to get started, I just need to remove the existing outlet box. And I'm going to remove the outlet electrical connections as well. And now the face plate. Okay. So now we have quite a bit of empty space to work with here. I'm going to install the 70 amp rated uh, Homeline Square D breaker panel. And then in that I'll install a 20 amp GFCI rated circuit breaker. And you can see the breaker here. The way these work is uh, both the hot and the neutral connect to the bottom of the breaker. So this works by measuring the amount of current coming through the hot pin as well as the neutral. And if it senses a difference, even a few milliamps between the two, it will trip this breaker. Additionally, this will provide us with the 20 amps overcurrent protection as well for that outlet box. Now you could simply put a regular one gang outlet box on here and put a 20 amp GFCI in and then piggyback the other four outlets off of it. However, that still will not give you the overcurrent protection, so I found that this box would be the best of both options. Alright, so I got the box mounted here, and the input wire is going to feed up from the top. Remove the sheathing from the Romex. Again, you typically want about a quarter of an inch down here. I kind of wish there was a bit more there, but... Uh... So this has two positions here. Uh, you could use a 240 volt, which is split phase, or you can just connect these together. Obviously, I'm only using one breaker on this design, so I'm just going to connect this one slot. And then at a later point in time, if I ever want to install a second breaker for whatever reason, uh, I could connect that slot as well. And then the white neutral will go in the neutral bar up here. I always like to leave a little extra slack for future improvements. That's why you see me leaving these couple of loops over here. So let's insert, insert our wire and tighten it down. And because we cannot bond our ground and our neutral in this sub panel, uh, due to the way this inverter works, it does not permit it while it is plugged in. So we'll need to keep our neutral and our ground separate. So I just need to install this separate grounding lug and that goes on the terminal up the top here. And with that done, we can connect our ground wire to the grounding lug. So for the outlet box, I'm going to have to remove this cable at the bottom and then put it in this knockout on the side here. That way when I set this box down, the wire can easily go from this box into this one without having to loop it around the bottom. And with that completed, now we can feed it in the side. Okay, and tighten the clamp down again on the wire. Remove the sheathing from the Romex. And we can also return the mounting screws to our outlet box as well. And lastly, we can return our faceplate. All right, so back to the circuit breaker side. I wanna leave these wires a little bit longer, but I am gonna cut some of the extra length off. And the ground will obviously go up to the grounding bar that we installed earlier. So on the side of the GFCI outlet, you can see they are labeled uh, load. This is the line symbol and load neutral. So those correspond to the two screws on the side here. The neutral wire will go into the silver screw 
and the line wire will go into the brass screw. And then you're ready to put your breaker in. It's kind of a tight fit in this particular enclosure. All right, there we go. Now this lead over here will be your neutral lead and that will go on to the side of your neutral bar. All right, so there you can see the neutral connection along with all of the other connections. And we got a nice cover plate for the front. It goes on like so. Screw. All right, so I got my input reconnected. And now I can put the cover plate back on for the connection terminals. All right, so now we can start it back up and test it out. Turn both battery circuit breakers on and power on the inverter. All right, so now we can turn on our AC breaker. So you can push this test button, which will apply a small resistor between the hot and the ground, and we'll make sure this breaker is functioning correctly. So as we can see, the breaker has shut off. So now we can push it down and then push it back up to turn it on. So there you go, guys. I hope this does resolve some of the safety issues that were pointed out. This outlet box and anything plugged into it now has ground fault protection and overcurrent protection as well. As far as some of you have pointed out regarding the grounding itself, uh, there's just, this is designed to be a mobile solution used out in the field and whatnot. There's just no practical way to carry around an eight foot ground rod. I suppose you could have a ground rod somewhere if you're gonna charge it outside with solar or somewhere in like a shed where there's a ground rod, but when you're on the go moving around, it's just not practical to carry around a ground rod. The only idea that comes to mind is you could have a strap that's inside, a wire that's connected to that ground lug that comes out and then maybe have like an alligator clamp that you can clip onto a nearby pole or something if you're working out there. But uh, if anybody else has ideas on the grounding side, I'd love to hear other suggestions as well. I hope this helps solve some of the questions that were asked and feedback I received. If you have any further questions or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to smash that like button as well. It helps the channel significantly. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.